All right. Don, uh, what would you say was the biggest lesson you guys took away from that? How much learning did, did you have to do out there tonight with a couple of players out and SD State, you know, having a, a pretty interesting first quarter? Uh, it's just uh, we're young. We're young. We're, we put a different lineup in. And sometimes when you change um, one player, it, it has an effect on it. Um, I do like Lay coming off the bench and being the being the spark off the bench. Um, but also want her, get, want her to get used to starting because at some point um, she'll start for us. And maybe in the future, maybe, you know, maybe in an instance like we had to we had to do it. I mean, knock on wood, we don't want any more injuries. Um, but it just took us a little a little while to get going. I think part of it is um, as much as we have prep, they're not going to guard us. You know, people bit the bullet and want to just shoot um, ill-advised shots and early shots and you know. And I, I think I can. I think I can attitude and you know the. The goal got small on us, but then we righted the ship in the um, in the second half and just start moving the ball and start um, defending a little bit better, getting some steals and some blocks and starting our offense through transition. Don, what was I guess the biggest impact did you feel on the floor from not having Tahina tonight, um, and also just kind of what's her status looking at Friday and yeah. moving forward? Um, Over twelve from three. <laughs> and a calming, she's calm. Like, you know, she has a sense of just calm to her. She's been in every basketball situation. So I I, I know she would have been a, uh, just a person out there that would have gotten us together. I mean, Raven, Raven's trying, you know, Raven's, you know, she's burning the candle at both ends on both sides of the basketball. So a lot of her energy expended doing that and and sometimes it's great to have another point guard out there just to balance that out. Um, and then Raven did came over and she's like, I miss, I miss Powell. <laughs> um, and we all miss Powell um, because we just got, it's only three games, but it's been six months of just five, six months of getting comfortable with her um, being out there on the floor with us. So um, just missed her out there and her presence. I uh, wanted to ask about uh, Camila Cardozo tonight, six blocks and a career high in points, even though it took a little bit for things to click. How did, were you uh, feeling about the way she responded? Um, great. We, we want Camilla to get off to a, like a dominating start, like not let the game come to her, take the game to the game. Um, I thought she tried, and I thought we did a great job of just forcing her to take shots and getting the ball to her and her just being dominant. Sometimes it's taking two and three people with you to the basket. If you miss, we're going to get we're going to get the offensive rebound, um, and then we're slowly trying to get her to take some outside shots because we don't want her to have to score like hard twos all the time. Like she can shoot it. She's got great mid range. She got great touch. We just have to get her used to doing that a little more often. So, so you know, teams aren't just packing the paint on her. Uh, when you're shooting the way you were in that first half, is it, do you have to kind of lock in more on defense in the huddles? Is it maybe harder for players to focus defensively? What does it do to defense when offense just isn't coming the way it has the last three games? Um, I mean, it just seems like it's on the gerbil wheel. You're just spinning your wheels and nothing's happening. Um, I think for us is is halftime. It's the, it's the best way to just kind of get our, our players calm because everybody comes in the game, they think – you know, when they score, you know, the basket's going to get bigger. Like, they, they really look like that. Like, everybody took a turn in, in trying to score against their defense when it was unexpected shots. Um, so it's just talking to them, and sometimes, you know, two-minute and 30-second timeout isn't enough to get them in a, in a better place. Don, I've got a couple of bigger picture questions from our pal and AP, Doug Feinberg. All right. He, uh, he wants to know, you've seen all these upsets so far in the women's game. What do you, what do you think of that? What do you think is the reason for that? Is it more parity? Is it, what, do you, what do you think? Um, I think women's basketball is good. You know, we can, we can talk about parity, but we're good. Like, our sport is at a really 
good place where anybody feels like they could beat anybody and it's it's come you know it's come to pass and um I think it helps everybody else when you see it like you prepare a little bit better you you got you got examples of what it what it could look like for you if you lose a basketball game and it it more so than just coaching your team up they see it they feel it so it is um, a real thing out there when, you know, when you see teams get upset. Yeah, and the other thing, uh, you've gone on some of these overseas trips and with your teams and stuff. How much of a bonding exercise is that for teams when you're able to spend a week or two yeah. overseas just yourselves? I, I do think it's, it's super helpful to get out of your your normal environment, your normal habits of, of – actually being at home or um, – and it's not a natural role win – I mean, role game. Um, when you're in another country, you know, you tend to stick with each other a little bit tighter. Um, you get a chance to experience other stuff too, not just practice and games. You get to experience, uh, you know, sightseeing and you take pictures and you, you have conversations about what's – you know, how they're feeling and what they're going through. That's – I'm talking more so just – you know, player to player, um, and then they start talking to you about what's you know what's happening, and this is is so cool that it's probably something that is an instant chemistry um, builder when you're able to do it. <laughs> Don, what is the status of Pow Pow and Tessa? You think they'll be back Friday? Mm, I don't. I don't know. I think. I, Powell wants to, Tessa wants to, but it's it's really on their bodies. And if they're able to get out there and do something, they haven't practiced, so we'll see. We got a day off tomorrow, so that gives them another day, and we'll see what they look like on on Wednesday. We saw you get on, you know, Malaysia Sanaya a couple of times tonight. Just, I mean, what is the process like for you of figuring out? How you know when to to push someone like Malaysia and when to just kind of let her experiment? Um, I think for, for for Malaysia is you can't do it all the time. You just have to pick and choose your spots. I I do feel like um, she's she's looking for a you know a like like a really great moment for her, like a crowd pleasing play. Um, she. She has an appetite for it, that she lose sight of the in between the great plays, and and that's where the game is being played. Like that's where the majority of the game is being played, and that's where you have to be solid. So that's what I that's my my conversations with her. Um, I mean, I thought she had a really good week of focused practice, um, but you gotta you gotta continue to give her more experiences in in game like situations. So. She'll have, or we'll we'll have like teaching points, but she's learning, and it's it's a slow process for her because she's only had to do what she's doing. She didn't have to, and, and then she was the best at it. So, you, you're not going to always be the best if, you know, if you approach it that way. So we're going to work a little bit on her approach. I'm not taking anything away from. Her. I want her to be great. I want her to be generational. I want her to be um, able to play a lot of different ways. Thank you all.